Hi, I'm Lynette and welcome to my channel. Today I am going to be showing you swatches and a tutorial of this look right here using the Tribe palette by Juvia's Place. If you like swatches and tutorials, please consider subscribing because I do them along with makeup, hauls, and reviews here on my channel every Saturday. Today's video marks the seventh episode in my Juvia's Place eyeshadow tutorial series. I have a playlist that I will link up here of all the tutorials I've done with my Juvia's Place eyeshadow palettes. And in these tutorials, I use only the Juvia's Place eyeshadow palette. I don't use any other eyeshadows. Um, this way I can show you a look that you can get from using just the palette alone by itself. And I know for some people, a Juvia's Place eyeshadow palette, some of them won't be considered a standalone eyeshadow palette because they tend to be very colorful. Um, for some people, if there's no black eyeshadow in the palette or a light brown crease color or an inner corner highlight shade, they don't necessarily consider it a standalone palette. Um, so I like to do these videos because I can show you a look that can be done if you so choose to use just the Juvia's Place palette. Now today's look, of course, was done with the Tribe palette by Juvia's Place. This is the actual palette. This is the box it comes in and it looks the exact same as the palette itself. And this is the palette. And it is cruelty free, designed and formulated in the US and is manufactured in China. And then these are, well, this is the beautiful artwork. Juvia's Place always has gorgeous artwork. And these are the shadows. You get big pans and it's a nine eyeshadow palette. And now let's see some swatches. And these are the swatches. Typical with Juvia's Place, they don't swatch well. The mattes don't swatch well. I had to really build these up so that you can, I could get a good swatch to show you. But usually, um, you know, they perform very well on the eye, but they swatch terribly. This shade right here, Coro, looks like your regular run-of-the-mill champagne shimmer in the palette. But once you swatch it, I don't know if you're able to see it with my lights, but this actually looks green, like a yellow green. It's really beautiful. The metallics in terms of the swatching, I didn't have to build up at all. These are like one finger swipes right here with the metallics, which is also typical of Juvia's Place. So as you can see from the swatches, they are beautiful eyeshadows. And what drew me to this palette were the greens. Green, see, green seems to be the color, um, the it color <laughs> this year. And these greens right here drew me in. And then this brown shade here, Ashanti, it's like this dirty mustard olive green shade. Um, really, really nice. And then this Kano shade, that looks champagne in the palette but really has a strong green shift is beautiful. Now at the end of my holiday shopping spree last year, <laughs> I told you that there was one more eyeshadow palette I was looking to buy and it was this one from Juvia's Place. And then my goal for 2019 is to slow down considerably with buying eyeshadow palettes. So when Juvia's Place had a sale recently, um, 20% off plus a 10 additional 10% if you use a discount code, an influencer discount code. I decided to go ahead and check it out, not expecting this palette to be part of the sale because Juvia's Place usually doesn't um, make their newest releases part of any sales, but I went on ahead and checked it out anyway, and to my surprise, it was included in the sale, so of course I went on ahead and picked it up. Now, <laughs> then I started to think, um, if this, this palette retails for $20, so with the sale I got it for $16. And then I started to think, I'm going to have to pay shipping because you have to spend a certain amount to get free shipping with Juvia's Place. And I didn't spend enough to get free shipping, but I just felt like, I felt upset 
that it wouldn't be worth it if I paid shipping just on one item or just on $16 worth of product. I know it's crazy. It was crazy then. It sounds even crazier now, but I felt like paying the shipping would be, I would feel like it was more worth it if I bought more products. <laughs> This is my twisted crazy thinking when it comes to buying makeup. <laughs> so I went on ahead and I picked up another palette and I thought I was buying the Deuce palette or the Duce palette and it turned out that I was buying the, um, the Zulu palette. <laughs> so I got two palettes instead of just the one which is what I really wanted but you know I'm going to put them both to use. So somewhere down the line you will see another eyeshadow tutorial with the Zulu palette. Now if you would like to see the tutorial for this look using this palette, the Tri Palette by Juvia's Place then keep on watching. I'm starting off with the LA Girl Pro HD Conceal in the color Fawn and I'm blending that out with a Wet n Wild um, flat shader brush. I decided to go in with a concealer and not set it because I figured I was going to need a base for these really light matte shadows that I'm going to do. Um, I wanted something for them to adhere to. This is going to be an all matte look. Now I'm going to go into the palette and I'm going to take Ashanti with a Wayne Goss um, number 16 brush and I'm going to place that in the crease and I like this shade it's very unique it's like this dirty mustard olive brown and it, uh, it's very pigmented as you can see I'm sorry for the blurriness it will get better as we go along and I'm just going to buff that into the crease and around the outer V area and now I'm taking San with my trusty Real Techniques flat shader brush and I'm just going to pat that onto the outer V and I'm going to eventually blend it up into the crease. And I'm just going to go back and forth into the pan several times to build up this shade. And I'm trying to be mindful of patting it as opposed to swiping it because, again, with these pigmented matte shadows, I'm just concerned about it adhering to the eye as I've gone along recently I've, I've had a few experiences with really matte um, pigmented shadows that just don't adhere then I'm going back in with that original brown that Ashanti and I'm just going to blend out the edges of that green and as you can see the green did build up very nicely now I'm going into the palette and I'm going to take Tootsie and a, a flat shader brush from MAC and um, I'm going to put that on the mobile eyelid and I really wanted to do more padding than <laughs> swiping here to build up the color and to get it to adhere to the eyelid and as you'll see going on that there's just this patch right in the middle of the eyelid that's really not adhering so I, I keep going in and trying to pat it to get it to stick and to build up the color as well. And it just, I'm never really able to get it to build up right there on the middle of the eyelid, as you can see right there. So now I'm taking the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define um, Concealer in the shade C11. And I'm going to essentially cut the crease using that same wet and wild shader brush and this is just um, a way for me to get these matte shadows to adhere to the lid and to build up the pigmentation once I get them on there and now I'm going back in with that same green shade and again I'm trying to be mindful of tapping it and that's not a matte brush by the way that is a makeup geek um, foil brush and I'm packing that that shade back onto the lid and now that I have a, a tackier base it is adhering better and I'm able to build it up now I'm going to take Maasai with that same brush that I just cleaned off and again I'm going to try to do more padding than swiping into the inner part of the lid and because I have that base and it's still a little tacky I am able to build it, although I should have done a little less swiping and more padding, but you have to do a combination of both because 
I also want to blend that shade in with that um, Tootsie shade that's on the mobile eyelid. And now I'm building up Tootsie again um, and also blending it into the Maasai to make sure we, we try to get as sim seamless a blend as possible. And then going back in with San and building up that outer V again and the crease because you don't want any of that to get blended away while you are blending shadows on the lid. And I'm taking that same sheet and a Wayne Goss number 19 brush and I'm putting that in the crease and I wanted to build up the intensity in the crease and I've I've grown to appreciate these shaped brushes these type of shaped brushes um, before I didn't really have much use for them but now I can appreciate how I'm able to get right there in the crease and do more detailed work with that type of brush and then back in with that original crease shade to blend that green out and now I'm just going to clean up the fallout, which was not a lot. And that's probably because that concealer was tacky and it gave the shadow something to adhere to as opposed to falling down onto my face. And now I'm just going to take the same colors that I used above the eye, below the eye on the lower lash line. And that I believe that's that Wayne Goss brush again, number 19 which turns out to be a nice brush for blending and smoking out shadows on the lower lash line. And now I'm going to take Kano and my Makeup Geek pencil brush. And I use this shade Wet and it's just so beautiful. It's this dual chrome, like yellow champagne green and really, really pretty. And I thought it set this um, look off very nicely. And I like to put it on the inner lower corner as well and now i'm taking the urban decay 24 7 glide on pencil in the color freak and i love this shade it's like this lime green yellow it's so fun and bright and it was perfect for this eye look and then this is the completed eye look i use my kiss faux mink lashes in the style little black dress my um inglot number 77 to do the wing of course and i know i always say this but i really really love how this look <laughs> came out and i hope you do too and i finished off today's look with my mac chestnut lip liner and my pat mcgrath little matte trans lipstick mini in the shade 1995 and that is what that looks like and the MAC Lip Glass in the color Steel Kiss. So I really do like the look I was able to do with this palette today. These greens are really beautiful. This one is my favorite. <laughs> and then I love this Kano here. As I suspected, I'm going to need some kind of base if I'm going to use these lighter green shades here. On my lid I had to cut the crease with concealer and leave it wet so that it would here and really so that I could build up the, the color so it would show up like it does in the pan so that's a little disappointing but not exactly unexpected otherwise I do like the palette and I'm looking forward I know I say this with every new palette I get <laughs> but I'm looking forward to exploring it some more and using this shade here and using Kano maybe all over the eyelid next time. So that is it for today. If you'd like to see any more looks with this palette, please let me know in the comments below. And if you liked this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing because I do makeup tutorials, haul swatches, and reviews here on my channel every Saturday. I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope to see you again next week. Until then, bye-bye.